Hey guys, welcome back to Coach Hall Rights. With a brand new school year about to start, I thought it would be a good time to talk about what exactly AP Lang is. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the course. AP stands for Advanced Placement, and the College Board has two Advanced Placement English classes. The first is AP Lang, and the second is AP Lit. Now, the major difference between the two classes is what they focus on. So AP Lang is more geared toward nonfiction and teaching students how to write effectively, whereas AP Lit is more focused on analyzing literature such as poetry, short fiction, and novels. For those of you who are thinking about signing up for AP Lang or maybe you're about to start your AP Lang class, there are some benefits that you definitely need to know about. One of the main reasons that students take AP classes is because of the potential for college credit. Now, college credit is not guaranteed, but one thing you need to remember is that in order to be eligible for the college credit, you need to take the AP exam. Each college gets to determine which scores they're looking for in order to award college credit. So you want to be aware of this as well because each college has different criteria. So for some schools, they'll want a composite of a three. Other schools might want a composite of a four and then some top schools require a five. And it's not the same for each subject either, so what they require for AP Lang might be different than, say, AP Bio. So if you know which colleges you might apply to already, it's good to look up this information to be informed. However, you're not expected to know all of the colleges you're going to apply to just yet, so if you don't have any idea about that, don't stress too much. Just focus on doing well in the class and doing your best on the exam. Additionally, some schools offer AP classes on a 5.0 scale, which can help students boost their GPA. But besides the college credit and the potential GPA bump, there are added benefits regardless of the score you make on the exam, or there are benefits even if you don't take the AP exam. So one of the major benefits of taking AP Lang is that you can improve your writing skills, and this will help you as you prepare for both your college and your career. Also, a lot of AP Lang classes really help students hone their critical thinking skills, and it helps students be able to analyze a text more deeply and have more rewarding discussions. So not only are you learning how to be a better writer, but you're also learning how to be a better thinker and a better communicator. Also, some of the assignments for AP Lang are very similar to what you might encounter in college. They might not be exact, but AP Lang focuses on research and argument, which are skills that you need to do in higher education. So even if you don't take the exam or don't make the score you want to on the exam, there are still added benefits to taking the class. And also there are life skills embedded in the course as well. Now that we've talked about the benefits of the class, let's talk about the exam itself. The exam itself is offered at the end of the course. So for most schools, at least in the US, school years start around either August or September and end in either May or June. So remember that you have an entire year to work on these skills. You're not expected to have them mastered in the beginning of the year. So please don't get intimidated as we start talking about what's on the exam because you're learning these skills over time in the class. The AP Lang exam will be offered in May. The AP readers will score the essays in June and then students get their scores back in in July. But when you get your scores back, just like with other AP classes, you get what's called a composite score, which means that you're going to get a number between one and five. Now, a lot of times students want to know exactly what they did on their multiple choice or how they scored on their essays. Unfortunately, that information is not provided. You just find out what your overall score on the exam was. Generally speaking, a three out of five composite is considered a qualifying score. So that's what many students aim for. The AP Lang exam has two parts. It starts with the multiple choice section, and then after that, students get a quick break, and then they move on to the free response questions, which are the essays. So for the multiple choice section, students have one hour or 60 minutes to answer a total of 45 questions. There is no penalty for guessing, so it's better to answer all of the questions, even if you're not totally sure of the answer. Now, unlike the ACT or the SAT, AP Lang multiple choice questions have five answer choices, not four. So it does make it a little bit harder. However, just like other standardized tests, there are usually a couple answer choices that you can immediately eliminate because they're not relevant or they're clearly misrepresenting the passage. Now, as far as the passages themselves, there are two reading passages. These tend to be longer. They're nonfiction passages. You also tend to have more questions for these as opposed to the writing questions, which there are three passages. The passages themselves are shorter and you tend to have fewer questions. So approximately half the multiple choice is based on the reading and then the other half is based on the writing. 
Students often ask if the AP Lang multiple choice questions are similar to that of the ACT or the SAT because a lot of times students are also taking these tests during their latter years of high school as well. So the answer is that there are some similarities. However, the AP Lang questions are usually a little bit harder. And part of that is because there are five answer choices and not four, but also the reading passages are a little bit more dense than what you would see on the SAT or the ACT. So there is a little bit of overlapping skill there, but at the same time, Time, they are separate tests. So for the reading section specifically, you're going to encounter questions about purpose or maybe word choice. The reading questions demonstrate your ability to not only comprehend, but also to analyze a nonfiction passage. Now, the writing questions are a little bit different, and those are actually the newer questions because the first time they appeared on an exam was in 2021. It was actually supposed to be 2020, but that didn't happen because of COVID. So with these newer writing questions, you're actually demonstrating your ability to understand author's purpose, but also style. You're acting like an editor of sorts. Now, it's still a multiple choice question, but basically you're being asked to determine how to transition effectively or how to combine sentences effectively. Students often want to know how many multiple choice questions they need to answer correctly in order to achieve a particular composite score. Let's say we're trying to aim for a three composite. Well, quite frankly, in order to earn a three composite, students only need to answer about 55% of the multiple choice questions correctly, and then ideally achieve a four out of six on their essays. We'll talk about the four out of six a little bit later. Now, the number 55% might surprise you because you might think that's really low. Now, for another class, let's say you're taking a math test, 55% would be considered pretty low. However, when we're talking about the AP Lang multiple choice section, 55% is actually not that bad because the questions are pretty difficult. And so we want to kind of reshape how we think of success when it comes to these questions because the numbers that you're used to achieving on other tests might not be the numbers that you achieve on the AP Lang test as far as the percentage of answers correct. So we need to remember that we're not expected to have a perfect score, but rather we want to aim for approximately 55% if we're shooting for that three. Now, if you want a four or a five composite, obviously you're gonna want to aim for a larger portion of the multiple choice questions answered correctly. The second section of the AP Lang exam is for the essays or free response questions. Now this section takes longer because it involves writing three essays. Students are given two hours and 15 minutes and basically it breaks down to the following. There is a recommended reading period of 15 minutes and then it's recommended that students spend approximately 40 minutes on each of the three essays. Now, technically speaking, it's rolling time, meaning that students can spend as little or as much time on any of the essays as they want to, but 40 minutes is the general recommendation. For the AP Lang exam, each essay is scored using a six point rubric. There's actually a different rubric for each of the three essay types. However, the rubrics have the same categories, so it's very uniform. Many teachers actually incorporate these rubrics into their classroom instruction to help students feel confident as they prepare for the exam. So the first point on each of the rubrics that students are eligible for is called the thesis point. Students get one point for a defensible thesis. If you're curious about what a defensible thesis is, I actually have some other videos on my channel talking about defensible thesis statements. After that, we look for the evidence and commentary. Now, this is where the bulk of your points come from for each of the essays, so it's really important to focus on having not only good evidence, but also strong commentary. So for this category, students can earn a score anywhere between a zero and a four. Now, personally, I recommend that my students try to shoot for at least a three out of four in this category, but again, it's something that you're not expected to have mastered at the beginning of the year. It takes time. The final point on each of the AP Lang rubrics is called the sophisticated point. Now this point is very difficult to earn. There are some different ways to earn it, such as having a vivid and persuasive writing style or having a very nuanced argument. I want students to know though that it is very difficult to earn this point and it's not something to be discouraged about because you can still do well on the exam even if you don't make a perfect score on your essays. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that one of the benefits of AP Lang is that the essays that you'll focus on writing in AP Lang class are actually somewhat similar to the types of assignments you might encounter in college. So basically, taking AP Lang and working on these types of essays is a really great foundation to help you for the more advanced academic writing that you might encounter in the future. So now let's talk about what these essays actually entail, because quite frankly, three essays might sound really intimidating. 
The order that I'm going to discuss these essays in is actually the order that they appear on the exam. This might not be the order that you're taught them in class though. So the first essay that you'll encounter on the exam, question one, is the synthesis essay. So a synthesis essay is kind of like a mini research paper. Now don't worry, they've done the research for you because the sources are provided. If you take an AP history class, there are some similarities between a synthesis essay in AP Lang and a DBQ for AP history. However, there are some key differences as well. So for a synthesis essay, you're going to be given a topic. You need to take a stance or assert a position on that topic. So choose a side. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use at least three sources, typically about six to eight are provided, to support your argument. So these can be in favor of your position, or you could even use a source or two to argue with and set up a counterclaim and rebuttal. To synthesize basically means to take different parts and put them together. Think of it kind of like a recipe. You have different ingredients in different proportions and you put them together to hopefully make something very delicious. So a synthesis essay is like that. You have your own argument and you're using the sources to support that. Now, why is this a useful skill for the future? I mentioned before that it's like a mini research paper. And regardless of the major that you have in college, chances are at some point you're going to have to write a research paper and you're going to have to use other people's research to support your own research. And because of that, a synthesis essay is a great start to learning those skills. The second essay on the AP Lang exam is the rhetorical analysis essay. This essay is my personal favorite, so much so that I even made my own ebook about rhetorical analysis because I love it so much. Now, rhetorical analysis is basically when students are given a nonfiction passage, typically a speech, a letter, or maybe even an article or an excerpt of a nonfiction text. And students are asked to analyze the text looking for the rhetorical choices and how that contributes to the purpose, message, or argument. So if you're not sure what a rhetorical choice is, don't worry. It's kind of confusing to a lot of students, especially at the beginning of the year. So don't freak out. I do have several videos on my channel about rhetorical analysis if you need additional help. But why does this actually matter? Rhetorical analysis is important for students because, let's face it, in today's society, we are subjected to all kinds of speeches, advertising, marketing, and we want to be able to interpret that and kind of dig into it more deeply. So rhetorical analysis is a valuable skill. The third essay on the AP Lang exam is the argument essay. And this one is the most open-ended because unlike the synthesis where they give you the sources or the rhetorical analysis essay where they give you a passage, this time you have to come up with your own evidence. You don't get to do any outside research. It has to come from your own background knowledge. So students can include evidence from history, current events, or even just your outside knowledge of things like music or sports or even pop culture. It really just depends on the prompt. So one of the benefits of this is that students can be a little bit more creative and unique with their responses. You can really tailor it to your own knowledge. On the other hand, sometimes it can be really tricky to come up with evidence. The word argument often has a negative connotation, but in this case, it's actually a positive because you are learning how to take a stance and you're learning how to back it up. And that's a very valuable skill in today's society. And it's something that applies not just to college essays or debates, but also to different elements of your future career as well. Even though the three essays on the AP Lang exam might seem very different at the heart of it, it's important for students to remember that you have to make a claim and then back up that claim logically with evidence and commentary. Please take a second to make sure that you are subscribed with your notifications turned on. That way you don't miss any future content related to AP Lang tutorial videos. And also if you have any questions or video requests, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Until next time guys, happy writing.